Remembering George Floyd, the first memorial service is held for the man whose death in police custody launched a global movement. America, this is the time of dealing with accountability in the criminal justice system. Amid emotional scenes, the first of several memorial services have been held in the American city of Minneapolis. It was held to remember the life of George Floyd, the 46-year-old black man whose death has sparked several days of protests across the US and indeed around the world. A lawyer for Mr Floyd's family and said his death was the result of a pandemic of racism and discrimination. From Minneapolis, Barbara Pletasha starts our coverage. This is the beginning of a period of official mourning for George Floyd, but not the end of his story. A pause for breath after 10 traumatic days. The unrest that has shaken the country in the wake of his death seemed to demand a collective display of grief, despite the risks of the coronavirus. One by one, members of Mr. Floyd's family remembered what he meant to them in life. Every day he walks outside, it'd be a line of people, like just like when we came in, wanting to greet him and wanted to have fun with him. He was, he was powerful, man. He had a way with words. He could always make you ready to jump and go all the time. Everybody loved George. Like he was this great big giant. And when he would, when he would wrap his arms around you, you would just feel like, you know, you were, everything could just go away. Any problems you had, any concerns you had would go away. But this service was even more about what George Floyd's death means to the nation, about another black man in a list of so many killed in police custody, about beginning to shape the massive movement for racial justice it ignited. I saw somebody standing in front of a church the other day with had been boarded up as a result of violence, held the Bible in his hand. I've been preaching since I was a little boy. I never seen anyone hold a Bible like that, but I'll leave that alone. The civil rights veteran, Reverend Al Sharpton, delivered an attack on the president's recent controversial photo op, but he was blistering about the violence of structural racism in the country. What happened to Floyd happens every day in this country, in education, in health services, and in every area of American life. It's time for us to stand up in George's name and say, get your knee off our necks. Let us stand still, you that believe in faith by your heads. They were silent for eight minutes and 46 seconds, the time that Mr. Floyd spent with a knee on his neck. That number's become a potent symbol of police brutality for protesters. In New York, another memorial, seeking to build on momentum for change. Promising that this time will be different. In Minneapolis, streets bear the scars of the dark days that followed George Floyd's death. Residents hunkered down, trying to protect their livelihoods, as protests turned violent, laying waste to hundreds of businesses. Our lives are black, and we matter. Yeah. But the community has rallied strongly, creating a safe space to support each other, uniting against the forces that would divide them, determined to lead the country in pushing for lasting change. So it can finally be the land of the free. This has been a world. seminal moment for you America to take a look at itself and ask in which direction it's going. Barbara Platt-Usher, BBC News, Minneapolis.